Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is on synchronization rules. So before we go into the topic, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so that you won't miss any important update from me. So in my previous videos, I have discussed how to synchronize a signal by using two flop synchronizers, handshake synchronizer, mug synchronizers, and different types of synchronizers. So now let us see what are the basic rules which must be followed in all the synchronization techniques. So the rule number one is a signal that crosses clock domain must come directly from a flop in the source clock domain. If a signal comes out of a combinational logic, there is a high chance of getting a glitch and which might result in metastable condition. So this is a must follow rule that is a signal which is crossing clock domains must be registered. So let us take a scenario where a signal is crossing the clock domains but through a combinational logic. So in this scenario as you can see we have two clock domains clock A and clock B. So a signal is being sent from clock A domain to clock B domain through a combinational logic here that is AND gate. So we have the output of this flop and this flop as K and L and been ANDed and given to the M and this output is the input for this flop which is driven by clock B. So this clock A and clock B might have different frequencies and time period. So let's see a case where this will cause a glitch in the design. So now let us look at waveforms. We have two clocks, clock A and clock B and signals K, L, M and N. So K and L are the inputs of the AND gate and M is the output of the AND gate and N is the output of the flop which is present in clock B clock domain. So K and L are exactly opposite to each other. So K is low at first and getting high after short period of time and L is high at first and then getting low. Since they both are ANDed, we will get M that is M is low at first and it is high for very short duration and going low again. So we are sending this signal that is M from clock A domain to clock B domain. Suppose the M signals falls at the clock edge of clock B then the output of the first flop that is N will be having a one for one whole clock period but actually the signal that should be transferred should be the short period of time the one should be high since the output is not registered and it is falling near the clock edge of clock B we are facing this problem that we are having the M signal for larger duration than required so this is a glitch so that's the reason we should never use a combinational logic output and send it to other clock domain. So never forget this point. We must register the signal that must be sent from one clock domain to another clock domain. So now let's go for rule two. Rule two is synchronize the signal only at one point and not at multiple points. When signals are synchronized at multiple points, the synchronized value may change and this will result in improper function. So we must synchronize a signal at one point since the values can vary from one synchronization output to another synchronization output we must take care that the signal is synchronized at only single point and take that point for our necessary requirements. So as you can see this is not the way to synchronize a signal. Here we are synchronizing the signal at two points so this is not allowed in synchronization. Suppose a signal is having a width of 10 bits, we must not synchronize each and every single bit. We must use a proper method. For example, we can use a handshake synchronizer instead of using a two-flop synchronizer. So choosing a proper synchronization technique is also important while synchronizing signals. So now let's go for the third and the final rule. This rule might sound silly, but we must use special flops in the library to build a two-stage synchronizer. So these flops have higher drive strength and high gain. 
which will help us to resolve the output to settle down quickly compared to the regular flop because of the high gain. So this will reduce the probability of metastability occurrence. Okay, there is a small chance that metastability can be reduced by using a high gain flops compared to the normal flops. And one more important thing, we cannot eliminate metastability. All we can do is to reduce the probability of occurrence of metastability. So usage of special flops which are available in the library of having a high gain is a better chance of getting the signal synchronized according to the requirements. So these are basic steps for synchronization which must be followed when you are synchronizing a signal. So if this video is helpful for you, please make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on and please hit that like button because YouTube algorithm likes likes. So thanks for watching and be brave.